Hey folks, Colin here from Something's Recording, and today I'm gonna show you how to compress bass guitar step by step. We're gonna be walking through compressing bass guitar today, but before we dive in, if you are ready to go a little bit deeper into the mixing process in its entirety and really start to hone your workflow as an audio engineer, then I have just the thing for you. It is my seven step mixing checklist, and it's just a simple PDF that will walk you through the entire mixing process step by step to help you get professional and radio ready mixes without any more of the hassle and without any more of the guesswork. It is a completely free guide and you can download it below using the link in the video description. Now let's jump in here and look at this bass guitar. Let me play you the finished mix for this song to start here. This is kind of the bridge section and there's a, I don't know, hooky bass riff going on in the background here that you can kind of hear going on on the bass guitar. So here's our finished mix for the song and then I'll solo up the bass guitar so you can hear our finished bass as well. So you can hear it's a good sounding bass and we've got it even enough that you can still hear the dynamic change of the bass as it plays through uh, this riff. It has a lot of dynamics in the riff as he hits a bigger note and does this walk down. We wanna preserve some of that dynamic range but we wanna keep our bass even as well because we don't want our low end moving all over the place. That's our foundation for a track. We don't want a moving foundation. We don't want any kind of moving targets in the low end. That's gonna create a mess later on. So first of all, let me show you the compressor that I use when I'm working on bass, and then we're gonna pull in a stock compressor and go over compressing bass with a stock compressor. Now normally when I'm working on bass, I'm reaching for an 1176 style compressor, and that's this guy right here. This is the FET comp inside of Studio One. Now with this, I'm going four to one ratio, so it's the uh, the smallest ratio on this compressor, but it's, it's still a fairly aggressive uh, ratio. Four to one, that means for every four dB we're going past the threshold, we're letting one dB through there. So that's a three dB reduction there. That's, that's a little bit more aggressive. Now attack, it's at 0.55 milliseconds, which is still fairly fast, but it's medium slow for this unit here, but we're still, bear in mind, under a millisecond. Now release, I've got all the way up at 50 milliseconds here, so as fast as possible for this compressor. We wanna grab those peaks on the bass guitar and then let go as fast as possible. We, wanna, we don't wanna crush anything and we don't wanna clamp down on our bass guitar too much. We just wanna grab bigger transients and then let go and have room for the bass guitar to breathe. Now there's no threshold or anything on this compressor. I'm just pushing the input up to get more compression. So this is fixed threshold. We push our input up to get more compression. So I'm pushing the input up to here till we're getting three, five, um, maybe seven dB reduction on some of the bigger hits, but usually sitting around five dB reduction. And then I'm pulling the output down to even out our volume in and out of the compressor. So take a listen here without the compression and then with it. So you can see we're doing about five dB reduction on those bigger peaks. And you can hear, especially on this first line here, this first bar, uh, we've got some quieter notes coming off this bigger note that intros into our riff. Without the compression, you can't really hear those second notes as well. We kick our compressor in, it evens out our bass guitar, and it also messes with our tone a little bit. It kind of feels like we're going a little bit harder on some of those initial transients, which is the nice thing about this 1176 style compressor. So that's what I'm normally reaching for when I'm working on bass guitar, but let me pull in the stock compressor here and we will go through compressing the bass using just stock compression inside the DAW here. So here's our stock compressor. Whatever stock compressor you have inside your DAW uh, or your audio workstation, it's gonna look very, very similar. Normally they have you know the threshold, ratio, attack and release settings. Those are our basic settings there. 
Some of them are gonna have the knee, some of them will have stereo link options and a side chain and a mix knob, but normally you're gonna have the five main components, which is threshold, ratio, attack, release, and makeup gain. This has an auto makeup gain feature and an auto uh, attack and release setting. We're not gonna get too much into that. We're gonna talk about setting your attack and release here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the ratio to four to one. So we're gonna match the ratio that we had on that 1176 style compressor here. It's a little bit more aggressive. You can kind of see here at the threshold point what our ratio does as we get uh, more aggressive with it. So we're going four to one here. So the, again, for every four dB we go past the threshold, we're gonna let one through there. So it's not brick wall, we're letting some through, but the more aggressive we get, the less we're letting through, right? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the threshold down here and adjust our attack and release settings. For me, it's always much, much easier to see as well as hear what the attack and release settings are do, especially if you're starting out. So a good way to do that is to just drastically pull the threshold down and you'll be able to see the gain reduction that is happening on your input signal. So in this case here on the bass guitar. Now I'm gonna set these kind of generic for the moment. We'll go um, a faster attack, so we'll do seven milliseconds on the attack and maybe 40 milliseconds or so on the release. So a faster attack, faster release. I wanna catch some of these bigger transients on the bass guitar. That's why we're opting for the faster attack and then faster release. We wanna let go as fast as possible so we're not holding on to anything. The longer we hold on and the harder we hold on and grab onto these things, the less bass we're gonna end up with. So we wanna grab and let go as fast as possible to preserve our low end here. So I'm gonna crank this down we're gonna hit play and you'll be able to see and hear the compression that's happening on the bass. And from there, we can tweak our attack and release settings. Okay, so the threshold's pretty cranked there. We're doing about 9 dB reduction on the bass guitar, but it, it shows us how our gain reduction is reacting and how our attack and release are working with our bass guitar. You could see how fast we're, we're attacking on those initial transients, and then you can see our release, so how fast we're letting go of the bass guitar after we compress there. I've tweaked both settings just a little bit here. I slowed our release down. It was a little too snappy feeling on the release, so we would hit and then let go really, really fast. So pulled it back just a touch and you can see we're kind of matching where the 1176 was in terms of the release there, about 50 milliseconds. And then attack, I made a little bit faster just to grab some of these bigger transients. We're not quite as fast as where the 1176 was, but we're good enough for this unit here. We don't need to go all the way down to you know, 0.55 milliseconds or wherever we were before. Five milliseconds or about six milliseconds here is working very, very well. So now that we've got our attack and release set, now we can readjust our threshold to do the amount of compression we want on the bass guitar, which is gonna be about five, maybe 6 dB reduction here. All right, now we've got our threshold set. We're doing about a uh, 6 dB reduction on some of those bigger hits there. So our last piece of the puzzle here is to set our makeup gain. So we're compressing those louder transients. So we're bringing the volume down. Now what we wanna do is bring the makeup gain up to set our bass guitar level back to where it was pre-compression. So we're matching our input and output gain. The nice thing about the stock compressor inside of Studio One is it shows your, your input level versus your output level. So we can kind of do it visually as well as using our ears here.
Cool, so we're setting our makeup gain to be at the same level in and out of the compressor on those bigger transients. That means as we bring those transients down, when we bring our whole level back up, we're gonna be closer across the entire bass guitar with our top level and our bottom level on the bass guitar here. So now we've got it pretty much set. Let's A-B our entire compressor here and see what we're sounding like in and out. You can hear how even we are post compression, but we still maintain some of that dynamic range that we need to make our bass guitar feel alive. So let's throw it back inside the track here now, and we can hear what our compressor is sounding like with the rest of the instruments as well. So I'll AB our compression inside the track here. Compressing bass guitar gets us a lot more evenness, so it keeps our low end and our foundation of our mix very, very consistent. So all we're doing here, setting our ratio four to one, pulling our threshold down so we can visually and set our release or our attack and release using our ears. So we're about five on the attack, 50 on the release, and then resetting our threshold to get that about 60 V reduction so we can set our bass guitar evenly inside the track. I hope that was helpful for you. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you're ready to take your mixes to the next level and really start dialing in your workflow as an audio engineer, then I have just the tool for you and it is completely free. It is my seven step mixing checklist and you can download it below to start creating more professional mixes in less time. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.